Okay. Welcome to blog number nine of the Ready Persona One. A lot of things happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're telling me. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I, I just want to explain. If it seems like I'm dumping a whole lot of things at you all at once, uh, it, it's because it, it's sort of purposeful because I'm kind of throwing five hooks at you and you can follow anyone you want in whatever order you want. So, yeah, I apologize if it seems like there's a lot of things going on at once and you're overwhelmed. And a lot of that's just because I'm just giving you the freedom to really. Yeah, I like it. Go about this I, however like, you want. Go with whatever lead that you want. Yeah. I feel like we just did the free fall water slide at the park. We went to the top. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We did everything. Oh. Yeah. I I, I think also that some of the things we wouldn't have discovered this session if we hadn't been adamant on trying to discover it anyway. So we did, I think, do a little bit of that to ourselves. Yeah. But yeah, blame Hark. The. yeah, I, I find it interesting which ones you decide to bite because there were definitely things that I dangled, like hooks that I dangled earlier um, in previous sessions, like um, Seymour. Seymour, for example. I dangled Seymour for a while um, and nobody went to go see him, which is fine, uh, but then that means he got arrested <laughs> and <laughs> therefore uh, he's still available, but it might be kind of harder to get things out of him while he's in jail, but not impossible. So, yeah, you know, I thought it's really interesting to see what you prioritize over other things. To be fair, at least in this case, like, Mr. Steele knows, like, things are going on. So maybe that might, like, help out I, with getting him out because it's like. <laughs> that poor guy is in over his yeah. head. There's yeah. so you're like, oh, this and then this and then this. And he's like, I'm still dealing with Family's the Ferris danger, wheel incident. Like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm yeah. still with the Ferris wheel incident. And you're all just like. <laughs> clearly being very efficient <laughs> why aren't you guys my detectives <laughs> why don't we hire you <laughs> private investigators yeah those protagonists oh uh, man there's so much to talk about I like, think. yeah there is like with abe's brother yeah, I think that's the yeah. obvious one. Just like I, I knew it was coming, and like in character, I was like, okay, well, let's take a step back and analyze the thing, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We'll see. But was, then it was like, it, no, it is. Abe had a whole character arc, you know. He, he yeah, had a full circle where yeah, he was complete denial all the way through the the accepting process to the very end, where he was like, I'm willing to help now. Instead of I, I, hinder, I was so close to converting him over. Yeah, I was were... so close. I was like, ah, that was what? Like he a... was my in. It's okay. That was a one, one, right? By one, yeah. By an eighteen one. and an eighteen and an eighteen and a nineteen. Yes. Also, that, that was been wild, really poetic. <laughs> I. This is so much. The moment, the moment I heard you hear chanting, I'm like, oh, he's. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's up. He's evil. <laughs> like you don't hear chanting, and then he's like, "Oh no, yeah, no, I'm just total good guy, just doing a thing." <laughs> no, no, don't don't worry. Yeah. It's it's like a, an orphan thing. It's like we we save orphans while also feeding babies yeah. across the world. That's what the chanting is for. Don't oh, don't I, look under the curtain. I, I purposely made Rook completely oblivious to the Ferris wheel incident just so I could say that he wasn't lying about trying to help in that situation, knowing that, well, but he's doing something else like under the, under the table that you don't know about yet. So at least yeah, to that me, was though, that also confirms that there isn't like, it's not one thing that's happening. There's like five different things that are happening, like different factions pulling and pushing against each other. Yeah. Except huh? we're dealing with like gods. A- which yeah, means, we're also dealing with gods. Which, which means yeah. the That's thing is, they could be all they all could be connected. Just that Rook doesn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I can think of three or four currently active like arcs happening, like all at the same time, and they're not necessarily all connected to each other directly. So yeah, it's I I understand yeah. it's confusing, but. Again, it's just the freedom of whatever you want to tackle I first. It. <laughs> I like, like it. I like that we have it. It's like, is it going to connect? Because it's certainly not yet. But is yeah. it going to be its own individual thing? Or are we going to find right. a connection? That's it's, part of the fun. 
it's like when you start up an RPG and you get all of these side quests <laughs> yeah. and you're like, I don't know what to do first. Yeah. What do I do first? Or, or I want to talk about some character moments of Cades that I found interesting. Um, the first of which is getting the opportunity to interact with our alternative selves gets to reflect like an internal portion of those characters. Cause you look at like, you look at Gabe and Odin and they just kind of work together. Gabe just kind of directs him. And then you look at Chrono and Kate and Chrono just looks down on him. He's like, he's a little pipsqueak dumbass and beats the crap out of him. And that's who like Kate looked up to. I, I just thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, I would have to say watching you role play with yourselves is super entertaining. <laughs> um, and you're all doing a great job. I'm, I'm obviously still curious to see how Joey role plays yeah. with himself too because he hasn't had a chance to do that yet but i think yeah. that'll be super fun and then um when it came to we were talking about the potential of Cade interacting with rook in that moment hearing his philosophy and whatnot and how Cade would have responded to it i think Cade would totally get it uh it'd just be like Cade would be like yeah i'm not arguing with you you Everyone has the right to try and make the world a better place in whatever way they decide to. However, the world gets to respond to you however it wants to. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and so you can keep doing what you're doing, but I'm going to stop you, you know, because I have that same freedom yeah. you have. Well, like I said, I do see a lot of similarities between Rook and Cade. And one one thing that's different, and I don't think, I, I kind of wanted Ave to try to, have more of a discussion with Rook. Um, but I think Ave was just absorbing everything Rook was saying instead of countering him. But mm -hmm. um, one one argument I was going to have Rook say is that unlike Cade, he's not trying to kill anyone. Like he's silencing people in his own way or getting them out of the picture of adding damage to the world his own way that is just is just making it so they can't talk or communicate. Yeah. And so to him, it's not as extreme of a yeah. thing. And therefore it's easier to that. And it's like, it's honestly pretty elegant. It's a pretty elegant yeah. solution. Right. And so that's how he's justified. A part of how he's justifying what he's doing is not because it's not as bad as like killing people, you know? Yeah, totally. Oh. Uh, Ethan, you killed it with your... <laughs> Your oh, yeah. <laughs> duo role play really loved that moment. It was hilarious. Oh, I tried. I tried. <laughs> and Kyle, you did awesome as well. Don't get Thank me you. wrong. But Thank you. Oh, yeah, no, I that mean... was more and more emotional. I, I felt that. Yeah. Oh, it was just hilarious. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I could tell you're frust you got frustrated with Odin on a few occasions. And I'm like, wow, maybe, maybe when I'm in my character and I'm a little frustrated with Odin, maybe that's not just me. And it's like, maybe that's a why little bit of odin like why did i make him like that <laughs> yeah i i purposely had odin be the one possessing cade because odin is so loud and boisterous knowing that cade tends to try to be more like stealthy and quiet i'm like oh no i'm giving him odin because <laughs> uh, of that and I, I was waiting for a good situation to trigger that a fun thing would be if, if the guards attacked or trying to pull him, Odin wouldn't have attacked because he probably would have saw them as citizens. So he probably just would have just been like, just kept walking forward and just taking the hits. But like, stay down. Either way. I, I was there would be opening how... fire and then all the bullets would just fall. Like that like, Superman movie. Right. Where she's like, doom, 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 doom. Well, it switches back to me and I'm getting pumped full of lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Angel Nectar, save the day, everyone. Come yeah. on, it's the cure. But like, nobody give Cade the Angel Nectar yet. He's being hit by a bunch of bullets. <laughs> <laughs> nobody feed oh. it to me. Um, uh, I need to start last... carrying around a little flask of Angel Nectar so when I change, I can, you know, emergency <laughs> flask of the terrible toxic stuff. Oh, oh. I would make Sage, like, roll a cavity check each time. <laughs> you now have two cavities. <laughs> Dave just immune to it. He just drinks it too much. D4 minus one. I, I, I must say, I was curious how you were going to do it. Because I, for me, I thought the next logical step was like, yeah, we black out and we have our characters possess them. But the next logical step to me as a, a fellow DM would be like, let's have our characters interact with each other. 
And I was wondering how you, if you were going to let like the person being possessed kind of try to emulate that character in the best way, or if it was going to be like, you control two characters now, which is what you ended up doing. Yeah. But I, I'm wondering if there's the uh, the ability to like manip- maybe not manipulate, but like who we possess or who is possessed kind of affects the personality. I'm wondering if that, I don't know. It didn't seem that way. But If it like rubs off on them a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I maybe? kind of played it as like, I'm very not in a great place afterwards and I started cursing. I, I'm Part honest- of that was me being like, oh. I'm honestly leaving that up to you. If you, the player, would like to like to see that happen for story purposes, knock yourself out. I don't have a problem with that. Um, this might just be me, but do you guys feel like we became like the crew for the first time this session? Like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, like, the crew we've been leading up to it, but yeah. <laughs> we just we're starting to click. I I can tell. I mean, we've always kind of been like. I think we felt more like a group always, but like now I think it's really starting to. I definitely feel overall Cade's more accepted in the team now than he was before, especially with that awkward hug <laughs> that um <laughs> makes me think of the, the Lord Voldemort Draco Malfoy hug kind yeah. of. <laughs> Watched that last <laughs> night. Such a weird hug. <laughs> I don't think it's like that because I do feel like at least on Abe's side it was not awkward, but on Kate's mm-hmm. side it was a little. Mm, I love weird. how it took uh, Chrono, Kate's uh, like superior self or whatever, to possess me and beat the shit out of um, Ave just for him to finally accept you. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that's another eye-opening thing for Cade. Just seeing Chrono instead of being Chrono, seeing Chrono and being like, okay, he is not near as cool as I thought he was. He was kind of a dick. Yeah. I think I like how Abe's like, you know, Cade is scary, but Chrono is way scarier than Cade. Because <laughs> <laughs> Chrono has an ego. <laughs> like, Chrono, Chrono wants to get places. Cade, yeah. he just kind of wants to be accepted, or at least that's how I'm reading it. Yeah, no, it's pretty Chrono wants to be great. Cade just wants to be. I think it both comes down to just wanting to be accepted, but it's like the, the ego push of wanting to be accepted is Chrono. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I can be accepted through being strong and loud and more powerful than people and just bulldozing things. Yeah. It's his illusion of what acceptance looks like. Yeah. I... I also would like to say, like, would anybody else be, um, because obviously Joey had a really big reaction, I think understandably, to Forrest beating the shit out of him. But would would you think that any of your characters would have perceptions altered of maybe not just their um, Vita characters, but also the real life based on what a Vita character does to another person so you're saying if Cade saw Cade kill someone if he would react or yeah like I I, maybe not like Cade maybe like if for example Forest possessed um Ave and Forest did or yellow possessed god tell me the names if yellow (laughs) possessed Ave and did something would somebody think differently of either Abe or Forrest because of what that character did? Uh, at least in Gabe's case, probably not. Mainly because he's like, yeah, you made these characters under the assumption that they're video game characters and it's not real life. So if you made someone who was a little bit more of a dick or an anti-hero, I can't really blame you for making that character because it's like you... True. You made it. It's like, for example, this is he's annoyed at himself for making Odin, but Odin is the whole point of Odin is I think this is also in like a confessional that and that's gonna pop up where Odin was like Gabe was like, Yeah, no, I made Odin to have fun not with my kids, but just have fun with the game because I spent so much time making it. So that's why Odin is such a <laughs> a damn simple <laughs> loud. Odin is kind of like your love letter to the game. Yeah, so it's just basically him just having fun. So when he's like, ah, he, it's it's 
kind of one of those things where I can't blame the person being possessed because it's not their fault. And I can't blame the person who made the character because they made them under the assumption that this was a fake world that's not going to really hurt anyone. Unless someone specifically made a character knowing it would be real, then you can't really. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. Ugh. I did. I mean, I also this was something I wrote for myself a long time ago. But it was kind of like after the idea of like, maybe we're going to be interacting with our Vita characters as our real characters. So I kind of threw in shoehorned that they're related in the story. And I, I mean, I've already kind of said like to Forest, Yellow's a big sister sort of looking. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really make them related, at least in the, my mind, until a few sessions ago. That was really interesting because one, it was cool. Like I said, it shows us the inner works of your character where you're like hugging your character, but also showed your delusion that you created this character to pull you out of a situation. And it was your imaginary friend um, made real. So that says a lot of different things about your character. Well, yeah, yeah, I think all of our characters are a little bit of a glimpse into our real world characters kind of in in some way some of them are more sick and twisted than others Mm -hmm. i'll admit that but (laughs) i think mine is a little bit twisted and sick um and maybe we'll see that going forward and i can tell chrono is uh, (laughs) there's problems i think chrono is going to change after today's session i think kate seeing chrono yeah is going to be like just to provide more context and more explanation, as far as your characters are concerned, like they're they're not aware, they're not self-aware that they're in a video game, but everything that is happening to them, even in the real world, is still a part of their canon life. So that means if you end up jumping back into the real world, your effectively your character still has memories of what happened to them while they were interacting with people like mm-hmm. in the real world there's that's there's that continuity if that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah. um and that's why i was a lot of the things that was happening to them are based on stuff that had already happened like the the capture the flag stuff like that already happened so you were just kind of reliving that as part of that continuity so so when gabe literally said my name's gabe it kind of broke Cotton, like the continuity and it had to reshape it so that it right it fit the so continuity it fit. better right and so it what will be interesting as sage says is how much your virtual characters will be affected and vice versa like how much your virtual characters will be affected by you and how much you will be affected by your virtual characters this could be a weird conversation where all of them are like, I don't understand the games. Uh, Odin's like, I understand everything. He does it. But like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, someone said there were you, a guy named Gabriel. They're like, ah, I know him. <laughs> is Gabe concerned at all that um, your kids will think that Odin is a cooler dad than you? Ooh, at the, interesting. I mean, he was made to be a cooler dad. He'd be like, well. Mr. Successful, I guess. <laughs> the uh, most hurtful way possible, Mission Successful. <laughs> oh, oh, I I also got to apologize, Hark. I put you on the spot with... Uh... Oh, no, it's okay. I, I now have to think of something. So I, 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 I didn't want to give an answer because I, I want to give this more thought. Yeah, I do have it, maybe ideas and stuff if you want to talk about that later. Sure. Uh, I actually do like how you played his dad, where his dad's kind of like... Like it, he does feel like a different a gay, but like a little like slightly different. Right, right. Because my always in my head that one of the reasons why he also I like that you threw in he's he's, he's tried to contact her but just got nothing back. Because I always yeah. felt like that's something that why Gabe wants to move away, uh, move on from his ex wife is because he knows his dad can't move on. So he's like, right. yeah, that's something I need to work on. No, I like that. I like that. Well, I was wanting to ask you if you found anything interesting or if you um, had any ideas or thoughts about anything you wanted to talk about. Me personally? Yeah. Or... Like, 
if anything in the session surprised you or maybe you have any threads or anything that maybe you decided in the moment would go a different way or I don't think anything surprised me per se but as I said earlier I I was very curious to see what hooks you were grabbing at and in what priority order and so like I had the expectation that that maybe you would um let, let me let, let me put it this way. I sort of dangled even things like the Live in La Vida Loca compound. Like I could have seen you all visiting that area sooner um, yeah. and having gotten things, ha- had gotten information that way. That's the thing about this is that it is a big mystery and there are a lot of puzzle pieces thrown at you and you're just trying to scramble and fit them together. And I'm kind of adapting to it because I obviously I don't want to like give you the whole answer right off the bat but based on what you do and in what order you do things i try to trickle in information so when Cade and viridian decided to go um into the headquarters of vita there were actually three different big major reveals pretty significant reveals that i was that i could have given them and i just decided to give them that specific one since i thought it made this made the most sense based on what you chose to deal with right now like the story arc you chose to deal with. But there are two other major reveals too that I'm just going to find opportunities to drop in later. So I hope that makes okay. sense. All right. Yeah, we learned a ton. ton but you did. Find it. You did. <laughs>